coloring our landscape now that we are finished our outline. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my file up here in the top right to open it in Illustrator. Mine might have occurred a little bit faster than yours because I already had Illustrator open. Um, so go ahead and do that now. We'll catch up in just a bit. When you do though, uh, I want you to uh, triple check your layers. Um, God forbid you did your outline on your stock photo. Now's the time to address it. Um, rather than continuing forward. So right over here, again, layers, you should have two. There should be stock photo and it should be locked, and then it should be outline and it should be unlocked. If I click the eyeball on stock photo, you should see your outline like this. Also right now, too, uh, you could go ahead and double check that you don't have any uh, open gaps like I did right here and right here. These ended up causing some problems down the road um, for me. Uh, I even double checked and I still miss them. So do not think that it is absolutely game over if you have some gaps. Even in what we're about to do, I've had it sometimes create gaps where I know I didn't have any. Uh, when it ran its little algorithm, it I feel like it creates them sometimes. So don't worry, it probably will happen to everybody in at least one or two spots. All right, um, I'm gonna actually leave the stock photo hidden. And what I'm gonna do with this outline layer is I wanna copy it to directly copy a layer, well, one of the ways, the way that I uh, have always done it, is I click and drag it onto the new layer icon. Right here is your create new layer. If I take my outline layer, I click and hold and move it down and then let go while I'm over top of the new layer icon, you'll see that it makes outline copy. So go ahead and do that right now. If you have it done, what we can do is we can lock the outline layer and hide it. With outline copy, I wanna do two things. I wanna double click it, I wanna rename it to color, and then hit enter. And I also want to um, change the color because it bothers me that they're both red. So if I double click in the empty space here where it says color, uh, you can go ahead and pick whatever you want. I'm gonna go with cyan, and then I'm going to hit okay. Um, now that we are, uh, well, we're almost ready to color. We have to do one more thing, I'm sorry is we wanna select every little shape that you've made and we need to do a feature with it. So to select it all, top left tool right here is selection tool or you could hit V. What I want you to do is click and drag so that your whole canvas and any little bit outside is selected. You might have to zoom out to do that and you'll see it snaps and selects everything like this. Once it's selected, if you go to objects right here, uh, in the top, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, look at your top of your screen, file, edit, and then object. Scroll pretty far down and you're gonna come to one called live paint. After you do that, if you go over right here, you'll see make. So again, object, live paint, make. Uh, this will say, you know, um, certain things may be affected, you know, yada, yada. Hit okay. And then if you click off, you will notice if I zoom in, your lines have became slightly thinner than probably what they were before. This is because it's just running its little algorithm. You'll see here that yes, it did create a little gap here that wasn't here before. Um, or let me double check. Oh no, that was a gap. Ah, this, yeah, I still didn't catch one. Um, ah, here's the one I think that it created. No, that's a gap. That was a default gap. Maybe yeah, this one actually didn't create any extra gaps. Maybe it was actually my actual fault. Good. Um, if yours did though, don't, again, don't feel harmed. Um, so your stock photo, before we color, we just want to double check this. I feel like it's pretty easy to forget to this step. So let's do this together. Uh, eyeball your stock photo back in so that you're looking at it and then double click off, not on the text, but like right next to it to bring up this. Make sure that your dim images too is unchecked. You want it back to hundred percent. So if it, if it was dimmed from when you were doing your outline, uncheck that and make sure that it's uh, natural. We're gonna be selecting colors from the stock photo and if we don't want the dim colors to be selected. So if your thing was at 50% and we're selecting colors from the photo, it's not gonna select the actual color, it's literally gonna select the dimmed 50% color. So um, please make sure that's, that's in place. All right, go back, select your color uh, layer. You're working on this one now for the next class or two. This will actually go really fast um, so I honestly think maybe two classes tops. All right, 
And the reason why it's going to go fast is hotkeys. So before I've been kind of going over here and I've been selecting the tools like the brush and the selection. We're just going to hotkey our way right through this. We're going to speed run this. So I work zoomed in like again, 200%. Again, command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. You will notice that at certain points, if you have really tiny um, shapes like these right here, you probably will have to really zoom in to sample the correct color from them. So be ready to zoom in and out a lot as you're working. It's cool, so that's a, it's a good habit. All right, hockeys, I and K. I as in infinite and K as in kite. What I does, if you hit it, it will select, as you can see over here, the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper, when you click anywhere on the screen, it will select that color. It picked up this green uh, like color, but I might want one that's a little bit lighter like that. And then if you hit K, uh, you'll see that it goes to the not just the paint bucket, but the live paint bucket. And each time you hover over any of your selected shapes that you made or sections, you'll see uh, like a red outline of being like, hey man, this is the area that you're going to paint in. So then I can click inside this and it'll fill it with that exact color. I'm going to go back to my eyedropper tool for this one, select over to K and paint in. I to select and K to paint. What you're looking for inside these uh, shapes is the most relevant color to the section. So like it, I always tend to go towards the center of each shape that I drew because I feel like that will give me the most relative color that I want, um, generally anyway. Let me try to have this occur. This happens to me a lot. Sometimes when you're trying to like really speed run this, the uh, live paint can mess up and paint like multiple shapes at once. So if I click I and I hit K, really, there we go. Uh, sometimes you're like, I K, I K, I K click, I K click, and you're trying to like get a really good APM or actions per minute. Um, it'll just be like, huh, what? And, it, and it'll just like paint everything um, or a lot of the stuff. If that ever happens, Command Z that, undo that. Um, not to say go slow, but like don't like, you don't have to be, don't try to like absolute like sonic speed this thing. Um, so a pace like I'm doing right now is probably, oh, see, even then, right there, uh, preferred. What I've been told um, by some colleagues of mine, what you want to do as a good habit is you wait for that red outline to come in before you click the paint bucket and that will keep you at a pretty good speed without that happening. Uh, last tip, command minus yourself and hide your stock photo like every five to ten minutes. A, it's nice because you get to appreciate your work and B, uh, it'll let you see any like little gaps that you might have missed like any like empty white spaces. And, you know, it'll make sure that everything's looking good zoomed out as well. Keep in mind, uh, albeit there'll be big posters, people won't be standing like super up close to your posters. Generally, they're going to be walking by them at around like four or five feet. So um, always being zoomed out every now and then is a good thing. This is what mine looked like when I was done coloring. Again, there are some white gaps that just would not color. I'll uh, try to show you the experience or what you'll find. You'll hit I and then... Uh, Hold on, my layer's locked, that's why. You'll hit I, and it will let you select the color inside there, but when you go to K, you'll see a little paint bucket with like a cross next to it when you're in the area that it won't paint. Again, because it, there's no, um, there's no uh, line here to delineate that that's like a filled shape. So don't worry about these yet. If you have an absolute ton, you might actually want to go back to your outline and draw them in and do the um, objects uh, live paint make again if it's like really bad let me know and uh, we'll touch base but in general uh, this is what yours should look like when you're done I think this is going to take a class or two so have some fun and then uh, we'll touch base after this you only have a few more steps to do after this um, file save you know at the end of the day and uh, you guys are good to go take care and I will see you in the next video